Hello, my dear students of the Faculty of Law, French Department. Welcome to the Economics course. This is Dr. Dina Mohi, and I'm happy to be with you after this somewhat long vacation. In this lecture, we are going to start a very important topic in microeconomics, which is the demand and supply. Chapter 3 is organized as follows. First, it begins with defining markets and prices. Second, it analyzes the demand side of the market. Analysis then is turned to the supply side. After that, it explains market equilibrium. And finally, what causes this market equilibrium to change? In this lecture, we are going to cover the first two points, which are markets and prices and demand. Let's begin our lecture by discussing what, we, what do we mean by the demand and supply model. The demand and supply model is a very important and fundamental economic model that is used to analyze the different forces that determine the prices of goods and services and the different factors affecting those forces. But before discussing this model, we need to know what do we mean by markets and what a competitive market actually refers to. A market is a place whereby sellers and buyers interact together and do business. So when we are saying or what, when we are discussing the market, for, uh, the market for goods and services, it is the place where the buyers of a certain product or a service interact with the seller of this good or, uh, or service. Thereby, we here determine the price of the good and the quantity that is bought and sold. Whereas the competitive market refers to one form of markets whereby many buyers and sellers exist so that no single buyer and no single seller can affect the market price. The market price of the product is collectively determined by the interaction of both buyers and sellers. So, what do we mean by a price? The price of a good is actually something that you must pay in order to get this good. In this respect, we have differentiated between money price and the relative price of a good. The money price is the amount of money that you must pay in order to get a good. Which means that if the price of a pen is five pounds, so you have to pay five pounds to, in order to get one unit of this good. Whereas the relative price of a good is the price of that good in terms of another. What does this really mean? Assume that we have two goods, cola and a cup of tea. If the money price of cola is five pounds and the tea price is two pounds, then the relative price of cola equals the money price of cola divided by the, the money price of tea, which is equal to 2.5 cups of tea. What this number tells us, it tells us the opportunity cost of obtaining cola you must sacrifice 2.5 cups of tea in order to get a can of coal. But why it is important to know the relative price of a good or its opportunity cost? Simply because of the, price, uh, the problem of scarcity. We always face scarcity so that we cannot get all what we want. So we constantly incur an opportunity cost. Let's now turn to the analysis of demand and supply model. In this respect, we need to analyze each side of the market. Let's begin by the supply by the demand side. First, what do we mean by demand for a good or more precisely, what are the conditions for demand to occur? In order to say that there is a demand for a certain good, such as a car, for example, there must be three conditions. First of all, and most logically, the person should have a desire for this product, which means that it satisfies a certain need for him. And most importantly, he should have the financial ability to buy. It. He can buy, or, or more precisely, he can afford to buy this product. He have the financial ability to obtain this product. And finally, have a plan to buy it. Okay. 
Now, what determines the demand for a good or what are the factors that affect your demand for any product? Actually, there are many factors that affect the demand for a good. The most important is its price, how much you are going to pay to obtain it. But also there are many other factors, such as your income, the prices of related goods, expected future prices or future income, your tastes, the size of the market. All of these are factors that can affect the demand for a product. We will begin by the law of demand, which reflects the relationship between the price of, a, of the good and the quantity demanded of it, holding other things constant. We know that the law of demand states that there is an inverse relationship between the price of a good and the quantity demanded of it, holding other things constant. But why this inverse relationship? It is an inverse relationship, meaning that as the price of the good increases, your quantity demanded will decrease. But why? Because of two effects or two reasons lead to this inverse relationship. The first of them is the substitution effect, which refers to the fact that as the price of a good increases, it becomes more expensive relative to other goods. And this makes the consumer switch switches to cheaper substitutes. It means that the opportunity cost of obtaining this good rises, so you decrease your demand for it. At the same time, as the price of a good goes up your, and your income remains the same, you have the same amount of money and the price of this good goes up, you will not be able to buy the same amount of the good and still at the same time can buy the same amount of all other goods. You have a fixed income. So if the price of the good increases, it means that your purchasing power has declined. So your demand will decline. To this end, we can represent the law of demand using the demand schedule, which reflects the entire relationship between the price and the quantity demanded numerically, and the demand curve, which represents this relationship graphically. In this respect, we have found that the demand curve is a downward sloping curve reflecting the inverse relationship between the price of a good and the quantity demanded. And as you remembered, we said that any inverse relationship between two variables is represented by a downward sloping curve. As the price of the good declines, the quantity demanded of it increases and vice versa. What also affects the demand for a good? There are many other factors that affect the demand. The most important is the income of the, uh, of the consumer. But in this respect, we have, differentiate, uh, we have to differentiate between normal goods and inferior goods. The demand for normal goods increases as the consumer's income increases. What do we mean by normal goods? Good, the goods like cars, bread, concerts, shoes, and clothes, and so on. You increase your demand for it as your income increases. On the other hand, the demand for inferior goods goods decreases as your income increase. These goods such as bus rides, used clothes, used cars, and so on. So there is a direct relationship between the demand for a good, for a normal good, and the income of the consumer. And while there is an inverse relationship between the income of the consumer and the demand for inferior goods. Another important factor is the price of related goods. Whether the good is a substitute or a complement good affects the demand for a good, but the demand, uh, what do we mean by substitute good? A substitute good is a good that can be used in place of another. You can substitute one good for the other. They have the same, they, they do the same function. Okay, such as tea and coffee. Here we want to, uh, to, to know what is the effect of the, the change in the price of a, relay, uh, of a substitute good on the demand of the other good. For example, we said that the tea and coffee are two substitute goods. 
and we need to know what is the effect of the change in the price of coffee on the demand for tea. If the price of coffee increases, the demand for tea will increase. Let's, say, let's see how this works. <clears throat> if the price of coffee increases, your demand for coffee will decline. And the coffee is a substitute for tea. So your demand for tea will increase as well. Okay, so there is a direct relationship between the, the change in the price of coffee and the demand for tea. If the two goods are to complement goods, then this relationship will be an inverse relationship. Let's see how. First, a complement good, it is a good that is used in conjunction with another good. We use the, the two goods together, such as tea and, and sugar. And in this respect, we want to know the effect of a change in the price of sugar on the demand for tea. If the price of sugar increases, the demand for tea will decline. Let's see how this works also. If the price of, of sugar increases, you will decrease your demand on sugar. The sugar is used with tea, so you will decrease your demand on tea as well. So this relationship is an inverse relationship. The price of sugar increases and your demand for tea decreases. Another factor is tastes. As the tastes of, of consumers or as people have more preferences towards a certain product, the demand for it increases. With respect to expected future prices, there is a direct relationship between the expected future price of a product and the current demand of this good. If the price of a good is expected to rise in the future, current demand for that good increases. If you, if you are expecting that the price of rice will increase the next weekend, you will increase your demand for rice today. So there is a direct relationship between the expected future price of a good and the demand for that good. Also, expected future income affects the demand for a product currently or the current demand for this good. When your income is expected to rise in the future, the demand might rise now. This is because there will be excess money in the future to do your plan, so you consume more today. Finally, the market size. As the market size increases or as the population increases, the demand will increase and this is also a direct relationship. But we need to know further what is the effect of a change in any of these factors on the demand curve. Suppose that the consumer's income has increased while the price of the good and other determinants of demand have remained constant. Before the increase in income, the consumer was willing to was willing to buy one unit. He was willing to buy one unit of the good at the price of 12. If the market price is 12, this consumer is willing to buy one unit. Okay? If the price decreases to 10, he is willing to pay a 2 pi 2 units. If it decreased further to 8, he is willing to pay 3, 2 pi 3 units. 4 units if the price of, uh, is 6, 5 units if the price is 4, and finally 6 units if this price is $2. Now, after the demand has, in, uh, after the consumer's income has increased, the consumer can afford to buy more units at each price. So, he is now willing to buy three units instead of one if the price is 12. Okay? Four units instead of two at the price of 10. Five units instead of three at the price of eight. Six, six units of the good instead of four if the price is six. Seven units instead of five at the price of four. And finally, eight units instead of two 
at the uh, in, instead of six at the price of two. No, what do you notice here? We can see that there is a complete new demand curve. You can see that there is a complete new demand curve as a result of the increase in income. Therefore, we can say that the change in income leads to a change in demand, which caused the demand curve to shift to the right, from D to D1. Now, there is a very important distinction that we need to make, which is the difference between a movement along the demand curve and a shift of the curve, or the difference between a change in the quantity demanded of a good and a change in demand. Remember, we said that there are many factors that affect the demand. We divide these factors into the effect of a change in price of the good, in the price of the good, and the effect of a change in any other factor or any factor other than the price. As the price change, the quantity demanded inversely changes, or this is reflected by the law of demand. We say that as the price increases, the quantity demanded of the good will decrease and vice versa. This leads to a movement along the curve, which means that we move from one point to another point along the demand curve. For example, as we see in the, in the, in the figure in the left hand side, when the price is B asterisk, the, the consumer demands uh, Q asterisk units of the good. If this price increases from P asterisk to P1, the quantity demanded declines from Q asterisk to Q1, which means that we moved up the demand curve from point B to point A. Alternatively, as the price declines from P asterisk to P2, the quantity demanded increase, uh, increases from Q asterisk to Q2, which means that we move down the demand curve from point B to point C. This change is called a movement along the curve that is caused by a change in the price of the good. On the other hand, if any other factor changes other than the price of the good, the, 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 the whole demand will change. This is because at each and every price, the, the consumer is willing to buy a different quantity, which constitutes a new demand curve that shifts to the right in case the demand increases and shifts to the left in case the demand decreases. Now we have completed our review on the demand side of the market. See you in the next lecture.